Okay, there are two reasons why I'm making this video. First of all, I want to promote my preset pack for Premiere Pro. And secondly, I just want to share my experience before moving on because I'm done with TikTok edits, at least on this channel. So if you're not interested in at least one of these things, then feel free to click off because no one is forcing you to watch. So what did I do this summer that got me 32 million views or engaged views and 75,000 likes, uh, subscribers. As for likes, that would be 1.3 million, but subscribers, 75,000. So this is from the 26th of June to the 26th of September, which is today. I started posting TikTok style edits around here. Um, I know it says like I've been posting one a day. There were about 28 more. So if I just pull up the list, these are all the shorts that I deleted and I posted them around here. And you're probably wondering, where are they? Why did I delete them? Well, due to multiple reasons, but I think that will be for another video. So yeah, as you can see, I kept on going on and on and on, and then I switched. So I, I began by making Squid Game edits that died out. So I switched to Wednesday because Wednesday season two dropped. And then I think the other half of season two dropped recently. And this is where things went crazy. Look at that. 3.2 million views in just a day and 6,000 subscribers as well. So let me actually show you what kind of edits I made. If they can even be considered edits, they're not really edits. They are uh, clips taken from popular shows. So it could be an emotional moment, maybe something intriguing, slap on some captions, color grade it and uh, add some effects. Done, you've made an edit. That's the formula I followed. And as you can see, my most popular short has almost 10 million views, 295,000 likes. There's another one with 8 million here. So as you can tell, it was very clearly a huge success. Now, how did I actually edit these? This is the part where I promote my preset pack because it's all done on Premiere Pro. Okay, so I'm going to be using this edit here, or should I say this short as an example. Oh, but before that, I just want to give a quick tip. So if you head over to the top file new sequence, uh, what I did was I created a sequence preset. So time base 60. 1080 by 1152, which I think is much better than 1080 by 1080 or even 1080 by 1280. I think it's a very nice balance, especially when you view these shorts on a phone. So 1080 by 1152, perfect for TikTok style edits. Um, everything else is fine. Yep. Uh, sample rate, sure. But the preview file format, I do QuickTime and Apple ProRes 4 to 2, uncheck both of these. And that's pretty much it. Um, sequence name, I could just put like main or something even though I end up changing it anyway so as you can see this one is called Tokyo Drift because that's the song that I used and uh, yeah just click say preset and every time you need to use it you can head over to sequence presets it should be underneath custom as you can see I've already got one right here but it's a little bit outdated because I used to use 1080 by 1280 back then it's not bad but I think 1152 is better than 1280 that did save me some time when making a new sequence. So what did I do to make these edits? I made presets. So if I head over to effects and search up Anger's premium preset pack. So this one right here, the main presets that I used were the colorings, the transitions and the shakes. So in this example, as you can see, there is very clearly a coloring. I've color graded my clip not to be confused with color correction. No one who does TikTok style editing or just makes edits in general, they don't color correct their edits. I don't color correct my edits. You don't color correct your edits. The reason being is simple. We don't need to because we're not making a movie. We're not making something that's supposed to be professional. Everyone gets confused between the two terms, color correction and color grading, but they, they're not the same thing. So let me do it before and after. So before it looks quite plain. So after adding my preset, it looks like this. I'm going to place an empty adjustment layer on top of this just to show you how the preset works. So I'm going to head to effects. First, let me just hide this one and I'm going to add cold coloring. Wait for it. Done. And if you want to make any changes, for instance, if you think the four color gradient is too strong, you can either hide it or turn down the opacity. It's completely up to you. Let's say I wanted to go for a warm coloring instead. So what I would do is add on warm coloring. I don't think it would look very good. I mean, it looks okay, but I think the green is too strong. So what we can do is turn down the 
four color gradient so I can turn down the opacity to 10% or even disable it completely. So yeah, that looks great, but it gives a totally different vibe compared to cold coloring. So it depends on your music. It depends on what kind of tone you want to achieve, which is why there are many variants of colorings. So even if you don't want to add any actual colors to your clip, if that makes sense, but you still want the clip to pop, you can add clarity coloring. So if I just add that on, you can see it's much more striking because every detail now pops out. You can even see the detail on her face, like all the wrinkles. It looks so bad, but I don't know. People love it. I don't know why they do. So yeah, those were the coloring. So just a very small part of what the pack includes. The full overview trailer is in the description below. So please do check that out before purchasing. And by the way, you do need plugins. You need Sapphire and the Magic Bullet plugin. I probably mentioned this already somewhere around the beginning of this video, but it's best to be vocal about this as well. Sapphire and Magic Bullet, you need those plugins. Otherwise, these presets will not work. The Sapphire plugin covers most of these presets. So the effects, transitions, so the zooms, warps, slides, all of that, including the shakes. But the Magic Bullet plugin covers the colorings. This part at the end is going to lag a lot. So I'm just going to show you the edits on screen instead. So as you can see, there is a twitch shake, there is a zoom, there is a flash, and there is a halftone effect. Once again, I used my own custom presets to make this transition. So as you can see, there are two adjustment layers. The bottom one has a jitter shake, twitch shake, flash, flicker, zoom out, which are all included here. Zooms, shakes, and if I scroll up, uh, the flicker is underneath effects. The halftone is on a separate adjustment layer, otherwise it won't work. And all I did was just copy and paste it over to my other clips. I'll show you an example right here. So as you can see, no effects. Uh, it is lagging a little, sorry about that. But what I'm going to do first is add on halftone. So where would it be? It would be down here somewhere. So underneath halftone, let's go for this one. Top adjustment layer, all done. Now I need a shake. So let's go for Twitch Shake 2, this one right here. I'm going to add that onto my second adjustment layer. Now we've got a Twitch Shake. Looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to add a flash as well. So this one right here. I'm also going to add a jitter shake. So this one right here. This keeps the movements consistent as you can see. And to finish it off, I'm going to add zoom out. So drag and drop. Let's take a look at the result. It is going to lag, so I am sorry about that. But this is what it looks like. And remember, you can always change your settings according to your liking. So if I just hide the half tone for a second, and uh, the same goes for the flash because I can't see anything. Actually, let's go for everything. So directional blur, which is the twitch shake and also the S shake. So what you can do is change the center or the position for the zoom in. So if your character or object is over here, you can just drag it there. And that's the point it's going to start from. So let me just increase or decrease the Z dist. So it zooms in more. As you can see, that's where the position begins from. So by making those small adjustments, moving the center X, Y, and also decreasing the Z dist for more impact, I think it's going to look much better overall. So I'm going to enable all my effects and the half tone. So if we now take a look, I mean, it's not terrible. I just can't see what's going on. It's way too bright at the beginning. So I'm going to open up the flash and decrease the exposure to, yeah, let's go for two and maybe decrease the half tone. So let's go for 50 perhaps. I'm just going to right click on the second keyframe and ease in. There you go. It now looks much clearer at the beginning. So you can actually see what's going on. Um, and if you think the Twitch shake is too strong, you can also, you know, decrease the amount. There is clearly way too much blur. You can't see anything. So we can decrease the amount from 500 to 200. It's all a matter of preference, depending on what you think looks best for your edit. Enger's premium presets pack includes 50 presets total from effects to colorings to transitions and shakes. So if you would like to make TikTok style edits, just like the ones I've shown you today, all on Premiere Pro, then this preset pack is for you. Finally, I can move on.